Apple has just launched their highly anticipated M4 MacBook Pros. Well today, we're going to go over everything that is new and exciting about these devices. And since it's us, we're also going to cover what is disappointing. Finally, at the end of the video, we'll let you know which ones you should buy. The MacBook Pro 14 can be configured with 5 CPU variants, an M4 chip with 10 cores, M4 Pro chips with 12 or 14, and Max chips with 14 or 16. The MacBook Pro 16 has all those options except the lowest end M4 chip. Finally, gone is the disgraceful MacBook Pros with only 8GB memory. For laptops that were priced well above $1000, it was just predatory that Apple was selling these machines. I felt bad for Apple buyers who bought these and just didn't know any better. The configurations of the 14-inch MacBook Pro with the M4 chip now all start with 16GB, and they can be upgraded to 32. The MacBook Pros with the M4 Pro chips now start at 24 and can be upgraded to 48. Apple's press release actually claims that these can go up to 64 gigs, but we couldn't see any way to configure them like that. The MacBook Pros with the M4 Max chips continue to start at 36 gig, but they can now be upgraded to a whopping 128 gig. For the vast majority of buyers, the base memory that these laptops now come with is going to be enough, and you just don't need to upgrade. Apple also sneaked in that the existing MacBook Airs with the M2 and M3 processors will now start with 16GB for the same price. This makes them significantly more competitive. Next, let's talk about memory bandwidth, as it seems that Apple's product managers have been watching my YouTube channel. I made a big stink about the nuke to memory bandwidth with the M3 series. The skinny is this, for some tasks it's not just whether you have enough memory that matters, it's also whether you can access your memory fast enough. This is even more apparent for MacBooks as they use unified memory. That means that the CPU and GPU share the same memory. GPU tasks are highly hardware optimized and need fast memory. In Windows laptops, they use dedicated GPUs with significantly higher memory bandwidth than what the CPUs have available to them. Most of the prior M3 MacBook Pros had lower memory bandwidth than the M2 versions that they were meant to replace. This created odd situations where M2 MacBook Pros would sometimes be just as fast or even faster for tasks that were dependent on fast access to memory. This has been rectified with these M4 chips. The M4 processor gets 120GB per second up from 100. The M4 Pro chip gets 273GB up from 150. And those with M4 Max chips get 410 or 546, depending on which you buy. Now, onto the processors themselves. These laptops won't arrive till November 8th, so our full reviews with test results will be published about a week after that. This is a good reason to get subscribed and turn on that notification bell. Nonetheless, we know from the iPad Pro that these M4 chips perform incredibly well, and are a huge step up from M3. When it comes to the M4 and M4 Pro chips, we get more cores than the processors that they are replacing. The M4 has 10 cores up from 8. Those two extra ones are efficient cores. Its GPU core count remains the same though. The M4 Pro has 12 cores for the lower end processor and 14 for the higher. This is a bump up from the 11 and 12 cores of the M3 models that they replace. Also, for the M4 Pro specifically, another issue of the M3 series has now been resolved. There are now more performance cores. The M3 Pro chips actually reduce the number of performance cores from the M2 chips that they were replacing, similar to the nuke to memory bandwidth. This created situations where the M3 Pro powered MacBook Pros didn't always perform that much better. The benefits of the faster M3 cores over the M2 cores were just offset by having less performance cores. This change, as I said, it has been reverted. The 12-core M4 Pro chip now goes back to having 8 performance cores and 4 efficient ones, and for the 14-core M4 Pro chip you get 2 additional performance cores. With this in mind, I would expect that the M4 Pro MacBook Pros in particular to be significantly faster than the M3 versions that they are replacing. On the GPU side, both M4 Pros get 2 additional GPU cores. Now when it comes to the M4 Max chips, the CPU core count remains the same. The lower end M4 Max chip though gets 2 additional GPU cores. On the MPU front, performance has been upped from 18 to 38 tops. This makes it competitive with the current batch of Windows laptops. However, you really should be looking at the total tops that the laptop is capable of, including its GPU. These Mac laptops have significantly more powerful integrated GPUs, so if the models you are running leverage that, these will destroy Ultrabooks without dedicated GPUs. I'm going to hop in and give Josh a break. The MacBook Pro 14s have gotten a slightly larger battery, moving up from 69.6 watt hours to 72.4. The MacBook Pro 16 gets an even smaller increase from 99.6 to 100, and they may just be rounding it here. We are super excited to test the power efficiency of these laptops when they come in. 
Apple's M3 series was way ahead of Intel, AMD, and Qualcomm, and we expect them to dominate even more. Moving along, the next big bit of good news is the ports. The M4 version of the MacBook Pro now gets the same three USB-C ports that the Pro and Max versions have. Previously, this cheaper version of the MacBook Pro only had two USB-C ports on the left side. It's good that you can now charge on either side and have an additional port. For this cheaper version of the MacBook Pro 14, these ports are Thunderbolt 4 speeds. The M4 Pro and Max versions get a huge upgrade to Thunderbolt 5 speeds. These are some of the first laptops to offer such speeds. Thunderbolt 5 is an absolutely massive step up from 40 gigabits of bandwidth to 120. It also allows for much higher power delivery. You will now be able to charge your laptop by USB-C up to 240 watts. The display has a couple of improvements. Apparently, it can now go up to 1,000 nits of brightness for SD content, which is just mind-blowing. That is up from 600 of the prior models, which was already very bright. They are also introducing a nano texture display, which is meant to reduce glare, useful for those of you who use laptops in direct sunlight. It is a $150 upgrade, though, that we don't believe is worth it. I've used these MacBook Pros like crazy in a variety of different lighting conditions. They already have bright screens that do a good job of combating reflections. In my three years of using MacBook Pros, I have been distracted by glare maybe twice, and these new MacBook Pros have brighter displays. I personally did not order this upgrade on any of the models I bought. Oh, and I do want to mention that the M4 variant of the MacBook Pro 14 now has better external display support, the same as the M4 Pro version. Back to you, Sierra. The webcams have been upgraded to a new 12 megapixel camera that will be able to keep you centered as you move around the frame. The quality of webcams in all laptops, including MacBooks, is definitely something that can be improved, so we're excited to test this. With all the good stuff out of the way, here's what we were disappointed about. Wi-Fi 7 has not been included. These laptops have Wi-Fi 6E, which is not upgradable. There is no excuse here. Our guess is that Apple has done this so they will have a reason to convince you to upgrade to the M5 models next year. Back on the displays. Some people will be disappointed there isn't a tandem OLED like in the iPad Pro. This would help reduce the number one issue with mini LED panels, which is ghosting for fast moving content. We never found it that bad, but some may be disappointed by this. All right, the notch is still here and just as big. I am shocked that they haven't shrunken this down to the one that the iPhone has. The real estate to the right of the notch is important on macOS. Many applications run there and can't be accessed anywhere else, like Dropbox. If you don't have enough space for such applications, they disappear behind the notch. This will be more noticeable on the smaller display of the MacBook Pro 14. Next is that we don't get any additional media engines. You still get one for the MacBook Pros with M4 and M4 Pro chips, and two for the MacBook Pros with M4 Max chips. One of the largest audiences for these laptops are video editors. Media encoding and decoding is the primary bottleneck for them. Not getting additional media engines is disappointing for this user base. Because of this, some tasks for them, such as rendering a video, are unlikely to be much faster with these new laptops. Next is the starting storage of 512 gigs in many of the base models. Check this out. This MacBook Pro 16 with the M4 Pro chip costs $2,900 and only comes with 512 gigs of storage. Are you serious? And of course, they charge $200 to upgrade it to one terabyte, which likely costs them less than 50 bucks. It basically shifts Apple from being stingy on memory to now being stingy on storage. Creators use these laptops and need storage. Also, Apple themselves are trying to make a big push into gaming. Games need a ton of storage. Finally, Apple's predatory upgrade strategy is still here. There often appears to be a reason to upgrade, but when you do, you get something bundled in that you don't want, yet you have to pay for. For example, if you want to get the fastest CPU performance, you have to get the highest M4 Max chip that has extra GPU cores that you may not need or want, yet you still have to pay for. Another example, if you want 36 gigs of memory in a MacBook Pro with the M4 Pro chip, you can't. You are forced to get 48 gigs and pay for the extra memory, which you may not need. That all being said, this issue has been reduced this year for two reasons. Firstly, starting memory on the cheapest models is now higher. Secondly, the M4 Pro 14 core now has the same number of cores as the lower end M4 Max chip. This means you can get close to max CPU performance from an M4 Pro chip. This was not the case with the older M3 Pro chips. Those had significantly less performance cores than their M3 Max chips. So you were forced to buy a Max chip if you wanted high end CPU performance. All right. Overall, we are really excited about this announcement. There's a lot more positive here than negative, and this is a better announcement than the M3 MacBook Pro release. For students or those with light computing needs, the MacBook Pro 14 base model with the M4 chip is the one to get. It's much better this year than it was in prior years. You get two extra cores, a much healthier amount of starting memory, and that extra Thunderbolt 4 port. For most programmers and audio folks, the MacBook Pro 14 with an M4 Pro chip is the one we recommend. This year, you get much stronger CPU performance with more total cores, and more of them are performance cores. You also get a very healthy amount of memory with 24 gigs. 
Now, if you want one terabyte of storage, please keep this in mind. Apple laptops regularly go on sale at retailers. Their custom configurations rarely do. If you wait for a sale, you should be able to get the 14 core one terabyte model for the same price as the 12 core with that upgrade. For video editors, most of you will be fine with the MacBook Pro 16 with the lowest end M4 Max chip. That model has the same number of media encoding engines as a 16 core. Memory bandwidth has been increased this year and it comes with a good amount of memory at 36 gigs. For 3D artists and data scientists doing AI or ML work, the highest end M4 Max chip in the MacBook Pro 16 is the way to go. You get the fastest memory speeds and the most GPU cores. Plus it comes standard with 48 gigs of memory. A combination of large amounts of memory, faster memory bandwidth, and an extremely powerful integrated GPU make the MacBook Pros with M4 Max chips ideal for AI workloads and machine learning. No other laptop has this combination. In Windows land, laptops with powerful GPUs have limited dedicated GPU memory at 12 or 16 gigs. This is a big benefit of Apple's unified memory combined with powerful integrated GPUs. For gamers, we would still recommend a Windows laptop all day long. Yes, Cyberpunk 2077 is finally coming to Mac, but it's a drop in the ocean compared to the games available on Windows laptops, which they will likely come out on first. Thanks, Sierra. This all being said, if you have an M2 or M3 MacBook Pro, you are unlikely to notice much of a difference by upgrading. So please think twice before spending your hard-earned cash. And Apple heavily suggests that you apply for a credit card when buying one of these laptops. This concerns me. You should not be going into debt to buy an Apple laptop. If you can't afford one, we have a range of other options on our website that are far more budget friendly. And on that note, as I mentioned, Apple laptops, they frequently go on sale. Our website is the place to go to find the best deals on them. And you can also see all the laptops we recommend for various types of users. Lastly, only 17% of our viewers are currently subscribed. We want to grow this channel. We want to make better videos and more videos for you. We can only do that with your support. You can contribute for free by just clicking that subscribe button and I would really appreciate it if you did. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day and I will catch you later.